Yes. Yeah, here is. Like a, like a, like a so that's early game weapons. It can be used for both melee and ranged attacks. Has a chance to break, but is easily crafted. And provides essential knockback against creatures. So it's with multiple spears ready due to their breakage chance. So, you know, these are just basic questions. I can ask it, uh, you know, how do I craft a spear? And it's going to tell me all the materials that I need to craft it. Um, craft a spear. So this is, I'm going to lower the volume, but this is interesting because it's telling me, you know, you need to unlock the crafting recipe first, and then you have to find flint, you have to find wood, you have to find fiber, so it knows a lot about the game, um, but I think that there's more to it. So for example, in this, this triceratops, so notice that I'm just going to say, in, also, you can just ask it in text, right? So you can just say, what do I need to ride that dinosaur? I'm not going to tell it what it is, okay. but the vision model is going to be able to recognize that this is a triceratops. Yeah, to ride the triceratops, you need a trike saddle. The saddle can be unlocked at level 16. It requires 12 engram points to craft, which is all, all, all true. And so you know, if I'm a player, I might go and say, Okay, so I'm going to go to the crafting recipes. I'm going to look for something called the trike saddle. Here it is. It costs 12 engram points to unlock it. At this point, I've already unlocked it. And then in, once I craft it, I can just put it on the dinosaur. And that should be it. It can also detect other things on the inventory, so on, on the screen. So, for example, I can say, is there any food in my inventory that would help tame the Triceratops. Yeah. And these are vision models, again, that, are, that have been trained to understand uh, particular objects in the, in the game window. So here it's saying, yeah, you have a medjo berry in, in, in your inventory, which can be used to tame the Triceratops. Not only is that true, the, the, the medjo berry is the, preferred, um, is the preferred meal for the Triceratops, which is pretty cool. You can ask it other questions, like how do I level up? It's going to look at your stats. It's going to uh, yeah, understand that, you know, it, depending on how many points you have available, it might say, oh, maybe you should uh, increase your carrying capacity. Maybe you should, maybe food and water is a bad example, because it's pretty easy in ARC to just eat. Um, but, in, you know, you can also ask it questions from, from from the map, for instance, and, and get some guidance on maybe where you should go next, like where you should explore next. So I can ask something like, if, where is the nearest cave to my location? Or something like that. And it's doing all this. Yeah, cool. So the nearest cave is. 34.9, longitude 65.8, which is somewhere we can actually navigate to. And it also tells me that to get there, I need to fly. So I, I'm going to need a terrace, I don't know what the dinosaur is called, the ones with wings. <laughs> a pterodactyl. A pterodactyl um, to get there. Um, but anyway, so I'll answer as many questions as you want about the game specific stuff. But there's more that it can do, so I can just ask it. What is, let's ask it a, a more complex question. What is my FPS? What is my PC latency? And can you graph both in the last you know, two minutes? So I'm going to give it some leeway here while it thinks and tries to graph it. Um, so my current frame rate is 66 FPS. My PC latency is 62. And it's going to graph it for me. Um, and I can download these results if I want to inspect it, if I want to debug my system. I can also ask it things like, what's my CPU and GPU utilization? Yeah. Maybe I'm interested in understanding what the bottlenecks are. Very useful to do the graph uh, from my reviews. Yeah. Is a, is a yeah, I mean, I can certainly <laughs> imagine that, you know, a press or developers would want to yeah. build in a benchmark mode for their yeah. very particular testing methodology. Yeah, yeah. That would be really cool. Um, and is there any overhead of my That's a great question. So there are, uh, first off, like running AI models is 
intensive on the GPU. And so, uh, of course, you need a strong hardware requirement. Uh, about this particular demonstration, it wouldn't be fair to say. I'll explain why. So, in this particular demonstration, there is a lot that is running locally. The vision models are running locally. The database with game knowledge that the language model uses to understand about the game, which is over 70,000 pages, by the way, also installed locally. In the automatic speech recognition model installed locally. In the LLM right now, the one that we're using is a general pre-trained model, and it's running on the cloud. So if you see this and I tell you, oh, look, the game is running smoothly, that wouldn't be fair. But if you were to tell me, oh, well, once you get the LLM locally and it's going to run the crap, that, that also wouldn't be fair because the developers could use a fine-tuned small language model that would be better at understanding that particular game than any other pre-trained model. Yeah. And so it's too early to say, uh, for this prototype, the current setup works well. The other thing that I would say is that uh, Project G-Assist is using something that we actually are working on today like an SDK called the AI Inference Manager. Mm -hmm. And the entire job of that thing is to control the execution of local and cloud inference. Mm -hmm. So it'll be up to the developer to designate this model is going to run locally, this model is going to run on the cloud, depending on the target of the developer, on the objective of the developer. So if you have a lower end system, for example, that might not run these AI models as effectively alongside a game, then they might choose, you know what, just run them on the cloud. If you have a monster, then you can run everything locally. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the intent is to give them a lot of flexibility. Um, we've talked about this a lot, but there's something cool that I want to show you. Um, it can optimize your graphic settings for you, similar to how GeForce Experience and NVIDIA app do it. Uh, yeah. You know, um, It can overclock your system. It mm -hmm. can also do that. Uh, but I will show you the next thing because the next thing actually removes the overclock. So I'm going to say, what is my power in the storage? Can you make my PC more efficient? So here I'm looking for what the power consumption of this 4090 is. We are power limited because we don't want to break the, <laughs> the demo speed. Ah, uh, okay, so I forgot to remove the, the optimization. Let me try it again. Let's see. Uh, right, so you guys came in just at the, at the last demo, so hold on a second. Can you remove the optimization for performance per watt? Basically, what I want to do is I want to say you're drawing a lot of power. What I want you to do is maintain a target of 60 frames per second and lower power as much as possible while respecting that target. So I'm going to say, um, make my PC more efficient, but do not go under 50 frames per second. I'll say 50 because we were already at 60. So it went down, so can you graph my uh, power usage? And we'll, we should see it updated in real time. So this is calling on a lot of GPU functions to achieve this, like, yeah, of course, overclocking, but undervolting. Yeah, see, so here's when I removed the optimization, and it was running at 300 frames per second. Here's when I included it again. And then it dropped to, uh, it's actually almost half, which is pretty cool. Um, especially in power constrained scenarios, you can imagine something like this would be interesting for maybe laptop or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, there's, I mean, there's a bunch we could show you and not enough time. <laughs> Do you have any other questions about this? No, Marikia, I think that you 
you are killing the, the wiki pages on the internet with this uh, uh, I, I don't assistant. Like, do you think so? I, I think that the hope is that the, that the wikis themselves will build this because it's not just for the developers, it would also be for uh, the okay. community to build them themselves. Okay. Oftentimes, the community has information about the meta of the game, like in Call of Duty, what are the best weapons, what are the best attachments. If the wikis often have like the most up-to-date information, so why not give them the tools, yeah. and then it, they can they can build it for themselves. Yeah, yeah. And oftentimes, you know, the wikis have good relationships with the developers, as is the case with a Studio Wildcard, and then they can work together with the developers to bring this sort of stuff in a different, in, you know, interface that can be oftentimes more convenient. Sometimes I like to. You know, go on YouTube and watch the 40 minute videos because they're fun and I like my creators. Um, and other times I like to read the encyclopedia, so I don't think that it's going to replace them. I mean, the wikis and the forums are still the knowledge base, so they are very much needed. They're still yeah, that's relevant. right. So I agree, you, you, you need a, a constantly maintained source of knowledge to be kept, uh, to be upkept, because what happens is when Ark Survival Ascended releases a new DLC. Right, yeah. with new dinosaurs, new mechanics, it, you need a constantly updated source of information. And some of the best people that are positioned to build something like this are the passionate community that build those wikis. So that's my, our hope, at least. Um, yes. Okay. And the performance during that's been 